Hi, my name is Jackson Gallagher. I'm going to be discussing Robert Greene's Law 11 from his book, The 48 Laws of Power. Law 11, learn to keep people dependent upon you. The idea of Robert Greene's Law is that you have to become so successful in your position, be so important to the structure that you work in, and that your employers or benefactors, whoever's above you in that structure, depends on you for results because they benefit just as much as you benefit from your own work you become completely irreplaceable. And Robert Greene begins this chapter by demonstrating a historical anecdote that goes against this law. This is where we encounter the Count of Carmagnola, who was a brigadier military leader in Italy in the 1400s. And in 1442, he was invited by the Doge of Italy to Venice to dine with him and be celebrated for his military success. What the Count did not realize at the time um, in his military and political landscape, that he was not special. He was completely replaceable, and this led to his demise. Instead of being invited to dine with the doge, he was actually led to the city dungeons and was executed days later. The count was a strong military leader, but he was no genius. He was not, he was not um, irreplaceable. He was copy and paste, a good strong military leader, but someone else could do his job just as well, and that's why he was executed. So that's Robert Greene's whole idea um, by showing this anecdote is that your success, your success can't be repeatable. You have to produce results, achieve levels of power that only you can. You cannot have someone um, replace you. You have to be unique in order to maintain your status. And this is where we meet Autumn Van Bismarck, who is a very important uh, Prussian political and military leader of the 1850s and 60s. Bismarck was a man who went against the grain. During a time where the political landscape was sliding in favor of political factions outside of the Prussian monarchy, Bismarck decided, you know what, I'm going to side with King Frederick and later King William, who will, um, who will survive, surpass, and rise to be the monarchy after Frederick passes away. Bismarck decides, I'm going to side with these two brothers, and I'm going to put all of my effort and energy into making the Prussian monarchy as strong as possible. And he was a genius military leader. He was a genius politician. He interweaved himself into so many government and military positions that despite both kings absolutely despising this man, he was so good at his job and did so many things to elevate the monarchy, to keep them alive and keep them in power for decades to come, that they decided we can't replace him. And Bismarck, uh, Robert Greene's interpretation of Bismarck's story is that he carved his own path. He knew his strengths, he knew his weaknesses, and he read the, t the scene of the times. He knew where the political power landscape was shifting, and he thought to himself, I'm good enough at my job to slide the slider in the other direction, to swing power back to the monarchy and allow them to continue to rule for decades. He was a genius, like I said, military-wise and politically, and that's one of Robert Greene's big keys to power. Bismarck had a lot of leverage. He was a one of one. He was a Thomas Edison, Albert Einstein. He could not be replaced, and that's why he was allowed to remain in power. Like I said, despite both kings absolutely despising and hating the man, he was so good at his job at, at elevating their own position and keeping the monarchs in power that they couldn't afford to lose him. And then Robert Greene throws in an additional small anecdote of King Louis of France, who had an astrologist um, that, unlike Bismarck, was rising to power and actually threatened the monarch. For whatever reason, King Louis was very annoyed with this astrologist. He was very worrisome that he was going to overthrow him. And he was going to have him executed. And just out of curiosity in conversation with the astrologist, he asked him, when will you die? And the astrologist answered, three days before yourself, my king. And King Louis absolutely was driven into a state of constant panic and fear. He thought, there's no way I can murder this man. I can execute him. Because if he's right, I will die before him. And if he's wrong, well, am I willing to bet my life that he's wrong? No. So the astrologist very similarly had leverage over the king. He knew when to play his cards, when to make himself irreplaceable because the king, out of superstition, didn't want to risk it. And then Robert Greene goes into a reversal of this law, which basically means, you know, why doesn't this law work? 
And it, he brings up two ideas. One, um, dependency equals dependency. Even if you make, you know, you, the people above you in a power structure dependent on you, you are also dependent on them. Dependency is equal. You're one and the same. You may be making yourself so valuable that you're irreplaceable, but you don't have the power yourself to leave that situation. You have to have people above you in order to supply you with, you know, your position, your power, your money, etc. And then this other law down here that if you want to break away from that structure, freedom comes with a price. If you want to escape the structure that you're in and achieve your own power independently, you forego all the protection of having someone above you to take blame for you when you fail. Um, you now take all that responsibility and risk onto yourself. So you can't escape these, the chains of being dependent upon someone above you, but it is extremely risky. And here are my sources, uh, Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power, his book. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation.